I heard the bells on Christmas Day, and though in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, on earth I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Verse 3 kind of fits with what we're going through this day and age. So let's stand as we say verses 1, 3, and 4 only. 1, 3, and 4.
and you schedule in your own individual lives as well. As far as uh, the Bible study, uh, we won't be having that until after the first of the year, and then we're going to kind of take it a week at a time, depending on the situation with the uh, um, sickness and various other things. And as the pastor's already done, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And then notice in your bulletin there the upcoming events. The upgrades will begin in the nursery for your library, estimated to take three weeks. When are they supposed to begin? January 11th. January 11th. That means the whatever is going to be done, painting. Yeah, I and think so they'll start in the live in the I'm sorry in the uh, nursery. Okay. So just for your information, and take note and praise the Lord for the offering on December 6th. You folks have been real faithful, and of course last week the service was canceled. And for Wednesday night prayer services will not begin again until April due to the weather and the virus and other things. And uh, fire practice is canceled until further notice, which most of you already know. But also take note that the pastor asked us to please help ourselves to the prayer sheets and missionary updates on the table in the foyer. Remember that. And then also, uh, myself, the pastor, and everybody involved here, we'd like to give special thanks to Ruth Vincent. She's not here today. and uh, But due to her and Sue Lou that go down, uh, they put together what we're going to be doing pretty much today for this uh, program. So we give thanks to them. And then uh, I have some cards uh, just to share with you. Um, with warmest thanks, grateful hearts, and deep appreciation for your thoughtfulness. Thank you very much for the fruit basket. It was very thoughtful. And that's from Ron Wendy. And then also a card to our church family, thanking God and wishing you a blessed and joyful Christmas with much happiness in the new year. Uh, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Love, Ron and Betty Wendy. And then we have one from uh, uh, Adele, your Upton family. May you always be blessed by God. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful support and uh, involvement in my life, uh, in my ministry, uh, in uh, Czech. I guess that's what it is. In Czech, Czechoslovakia? I guess that's where it is. Many blessings to you all. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year, love, Adele. And then this letter also came with this. Did how many how many got this letter? Quite a few of you did. Those of you that didn't, I'm going to read part of it at least, and then we'll post it on the bulletin board for you to look at. You're at the Baptist Church. It's that time of year when the world falls in love. Every song you hear seems to say. Uh, that we're falling in love. This song, among many others, has been on uh, repeat in my head for weeks now. I pray this letter finds you well and looking forward to uh, the Christmas season as much as I am. This will be a short and sweet, I promise. And then she goes on to a couple, three more paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to get back uh, to baking cookies. <laughs> do you still do that? <laughs> the sugar cookies with a little frosting on them, right? A lot of frosting. <laughs> okay, but I never pass up the chance to tell you how thankful I am for you and how much your investment in the ministry in check it means to me. The team there continues to find creative ways to reach the people around them as they slowly open again. One of the new things that stated was a video series for kids that uses the Advent season to share the gospel. They are also working to record Christmas songs to be released on Spotify? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you something you had in your soup. <laughs> and you too. We have some of the amazing musical talent uh, on our team. And this will be a huge 
encouragement to the Christian community in Czech. Look forward to Word of Life CZ and YouTube and have a listen. So that's how you can find it out. And I'll have Pastor we'll post this on the uh, bulletin board. Any other announcements that should be made today? Yes. I just want to say that with the upcoming renovations and painting and whatever that's going on, um, I have to take all the books off all the shelves in the library, and I intend to be here next week after, well, the week after Christmas, you know, between Christmas and New Year's, boxing books. And you can't get many people in the library, but if there are one or two people that want to come anytime, whatever, to help me until the job is done, you're more than welcome to join me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything else we may have missed? Okay, this year we have seen many changes in the way we do things. Many of our habits, rituals, and traditions have had to be set aside, at least temporarily. Among those traditions are the children's Christmas pageant and the annual Christmas cantata performed by our church choir. In its place, we will be having a variety of presentations that we hope will inspire you. And we'll begin with that now. I'd just like to say you realize that we're doing this without a rehearsal. <laughs> and I've heard somewhere that rehearsals always go better than the program. So this is a rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife and I are going to start and, and try to sing for you a song that we like, Redeeming Love. And that's the reason Christ came in this world. Redeeming Love. Listen to the words of this. Christ still came into the world at Christmas, and that is cause enough 
to find a way to celebrate. Let's think about that. I like a good story, don't you? The words, once upon a time, or it was the night before Christmas, or, and it came to pass in those days, conjure up fanciful images, and I'm ready to settle back and listen. But the account of Jesus' birth in the scripture is more than a fanciful story. As it is read this morning, listen for the words that speak of light, brightness, and shininess, and let them whisper hope into your heart. Sally? scripture this morning, but I have a couple, uh, I have another reading to do, so I'm just going to do a shortened, I don't want to say a shortened version, but it gets into, um, in, in Luke, this is Luke, and I'm starting on verse 7, 2, 7, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same sh country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about, about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for I behold, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is a devotional by David, Paul David Tripp that I, that I read. And this is the, the devotional for Christmas Day. It says, Jesus was despised and rejected in the here and now so that you would have the Father's love and acceptance forever. The words I am about to read should be included in every Christmas celebration. They express the glorious results of the coming of the Christ child to earth. He experienced the manger, the flight to Egypt, the daily suffering of hunger, hom homelessness, the rejection of religious authorities, the disloyalty of the disciples, the unjust trial, the cruel death, and the tomb so that you would have what these words express. He came and endured all these things for you and for me, so that we would have forever what we never could have earned, deserved, or achieved on our own. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all. How will he, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who at the right hand of the God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else of all creation will, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sit in front of your Christmas tree and read these words out loud to your loved one so that you all will remember what the Christmas story is all about. Remember that Jesus willingly endured constant rejection, life-ending injustice, so that you and I would experience the, un the unalterable, unshakable, and undefeated love of God forever. Remember he readily went unloved so that he would, we would know his constant love. Remember he deserved to be loved but was rejected so that we who deserve to be rejected would be eternally loved. Remember that he was willing to subject himself to the fickle and failing love of his followers so that we would know the faithful and unfailing love of the Father. Remember that he endured separation so that nothing else could separate us from the Father's love. 
As you remember these things, remember this. If God is willing to give up his son so that we would know his love, doesn't it make sense that he would also ask us to give everything else that we need? He would also give us. The promise of the Christmas story is unshakable love and every need met. Now that's worth celebrating. Any Christmas songs speak of a clear, calm, starry night around Bethlehem. While we really don't know what the weather was like, we do know that Christmas was the night Jesus, who was referred to as the day star by Peter, came into the world, a holy night indeed. So,
thank you very much. That is one of my all-time favorite Christmas hymns. Children, I have a story for you all. Let me have the children come up here at this time. You're welcome to come up, sweetie. If not, that's fine. That's fine. We have a, a young guest with us today. And what's your name again? Aria. 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 Beautiful, beautiful thing. Right here, Joe. All right. Well, I, as I said, I have a, a story that I'm going to share with you today. And that story is of a little boy. And this little boy, he was very, very much afraid of the dark. Have any of you been afraid of the dark? Yeah. Well, this little boy did not like going to bed at night. You know why? Because after mommy and daddy prayed with him, they would go out and turn off the light and it was dark. And he didn't like the darkness. It made him afraid. It made him very scared. And so mommy and daddy got something for him. It's a nightlight. How many of you have a nightlight in your you do too? You have Christmas lights also. I'm going to talk to you about the Christmas lights. That's right. Oh, well, tell you what. That little nightlight that Mommy and Daddy got for him made him feel better because that little teeny light in his dark bedroom just made the darkness go away. Even on the darkest of nights, there was enough light that made him feel very secure and very comfortable so that he could fall asleep at night. But that little boy grew up, and he became a man, and he realized that there was another type of darkness, a darkness that was not outside of him, like when the sun goes down and the darkness comes, this was a darkness that was inside of him. And he knew that he had this darkness because no matter how much he tried to be good from the time he was a little boy to the time that he was a man, he would still do things that would hurt other people's feelings. He would... He would do things that he, know, he knew that he shouldn't do. And he didn't know how to get rid of this darkness within him that, that really was a fear for him as well. But one day, one day, light came into his life. And that light came when he trusted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Do you know what Jesus said about himself? He said, I am the light of the world. All who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that light made him feel so good and so much better because he knew that he had the light of life. He had Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was, Jesus is very much like a nightlight that we have in our heart that takes the darkness away out of our life. And you know what? When you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God uses you to be a light to others so that you can tell them you don't have to be afraid of the dark because there is light that has come into the world. And that light is Jesus. And so this Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when you are just traveling around, have you ever seen uh, houses with lights on the houses, all different colors? Yeah. Do you ever see lights on the, uh, the poles like down in town, the light poles? Yeah. And uh, do you have 
a tree that has lights on it, maybe? Yeah. When you see those lights, I want you to remember what Jesus said. I am the light of the world. So I want to wish you all and your families a very Merry Christmas. And what else do we do on Christmas? We give gifts, right? Because the greatest gift of all from God to us is whom? Jesus. That's exactly right, Joshua. So I'm going to give you a gift. But you ask your mommy and daddy if it's okay if you have them. Okay? Well, that's not fair. <laughs> 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 take it away from them now? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> you do that, and I will look very good in your <laughs> And so after that, we're going to have John come up, and the children are going to sing. Excitement is on the children's faces as anticipation fills the air. But for some it can be lonely when loved ones have passed away. Memories are all that linger as the years begin to fade. But Christ's light should never dim. It should ever shine out bright. Our ray of hope in this troubled world is our joy of eternal light. Christmas, when spent with Jesus, can warm our hurting hearts. For as his light shines within us, its glow warms our deepest parts. When the angels announced Jesus' birth to the shepherds, 
glory of the Lord shone round about them. Along with this light, they brought news of hope to those who were considered the lowliest of men. Hark, the angels are still singing today. Okay. Hark, the herald angels sing. Verse, or, or in, uh, number 125 in the book. And we'll sing the first and the last verses only. Please stand as we sing. Here it is. Like a little stretch. Oh, 
to see CJ made that last step. <laughs> <laughs> he made it. You missed the nativity scene. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas story is a story of lights, shining stars in the sky, the light of the glory of God surrounding the angels, the star of the east that guided the wise men, and the light of the world, born in a stable and laid in a manger. The light brings hope in a dark world. Instead of focusing on what's missing from our celebrations, let's share our hope this Christmas. Ask you. Participated in it, and again, as it has been mentioned, to uh, Ruth Vincent and also for Sue Go Down for their part in organizing it and putting it together. Uh, this year's theme, if you have picked it up, is that Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. 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 And uh, it is that light that continues to shine in the darkness, even in our own day, that mankind might come to know the one who is the light of the world and the light of life. Let us pray. Father, at this time we open up your word and we thank you for this story that we have heard all our lives. And every year it brings renewed joy, renewed peace, a renewed confidence, in all that we have set our hope in and all that we trust in in regards to eternal life, in regards to who our God is and who God is, the Creator God. And Lord, and who your Son is, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we open up this passage today, a short little passage that gives hope and life and light Lord, we ask that you would just open up our hearts and our ears to hear and to receive it and to believe upon it and give you thanks. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to a passage that we have already heard, and that is in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. This is part of the angelic announcement that was given to some lowly shepherds that were just outside of Bethlehem, keeping a watch over their flock by night. And as we know, the heavens opened the glory of the Lord to show round about them. And the, the shepherds were fearful. They were very fearful of this glorious light that was shining. And this heavenly host, this angel that was uh, bringing a message to them that gives us hope today. Lord, we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. From God's heavenly throne, we have a message that was given to the angelic angel, the angel that would bring an announcement to the shepherds on that beautiful and glorious night, a message of great hope, that first Christmas season. And in that hope, I find seven reasons why we can have hope this Christmas season, why we can have hope that will take us into the new year and even into eternity. And the first reason why we can have hope this Christmas season is what the angel first said in, the, in these three words in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. For unto you, unto you. How intensely personal that is. But then we realize that you is not just one individual, but everybody. In fact, the angel uh, said that just before uh, he was to make this announcement for unto you. 
He said, Fear not, behold, I bring good news of great joy that will be for all people. Every single person, every single human being that has ever lived, regardless of race, regardless of creed, regardless of what generation one is in, we have been given a great hope for unto you. That you is plural, and yet it is intensely personal to each and every one of us who hear it. You is that all-inclusive representative of the whole human race. And yet, and yet we can hear that and know that he, that it is God himself that is speaking to us. That you is like an ever-expanding layer of concentric circles. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? That you was first given to some lowly shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. And then when they heard that, they heard that there was the Savior was born as a babe lying in a manger, and they immediately went out. And so that circle expanded from the shepherds to Mary and Joseph when those shepherds showed up and said, we have had this announcement from these glorious angels that there is a child here who is the Savior, who is the Messiah. And so after that, Mary held all these things into her heart, and then later on, the disciples would hear about this, this wonderful message that was given, and they would actually be in the very presence of the Lord. And they had seen this babe that was born in a manger, and now is discipling them, teaching them, and then one of the apostles, the Apostle Paul, who ministered and discipled Luke, and Luke recorded that very message in the text that we have today in our Bibles. And all the generations that have passed, and all the generations that are even here today, can read that very same thing for unto you, unto you. How intensely personal that is. Coming into the world and bringing a message of hope that exists with us even today. For unto you is born. Think about that. For unto you is born. That doesn't seem like anything special. We've all been born, haven't we? But there's something wonderfully unique about this birth. For unto you is born. To be born is to be clothed in flesh and infused with a life, a physical life, that can only come from God. The question is, how does he who is life, who is eternal, who is uncreated, he has always existed even before there was creation, he who is separate from his creation become a part, an intimate part of his own creation. How does that happen? How does he who is eternal become personalized with his creation, with his creatures? We who are temporal. How does he who is eternal, eternally spirit become mortal? clothed in flesh so as to dwell among men? The answer is found in the doctrine of the Incarnation. Incarnation means to be enfleshed. And that is that doctrine we see throughout many parts of the Scripture. But I want to take you back just one page in Luke chapter 1 when the announcement from Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, came to Mary for the very first time. And if you look at chapter 1, verse 30, look at what the angel said to Mary. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God of the Most High. And the Lord God 
will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. So there's something unique about this, this child, this son that, that is coming. There is an eternity there. And his kingdom, there will be no end. It is an eternal kingdom. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That is a picture of how Jesus had no sin nature. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. That is the beginning picture of the Incarnation. But I want to take you to one more passage that uh, the Apostle John talks about in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then I'm going to drop down to verse 14. The immensities of these words are just incredible. In the beginning, in other words, when there was a beginning, something, someone already existed. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was already there at the beginning. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. In other words, the Word is the one who is the Creator. He created all things that there, that there is. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. This one who is the word is life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. And then we see the incarnation. And the word became flesh. Verse 14. And dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only son of the father full of grace and truth. Amen? Amen? For unto you is born. The incarnation brings the fullness of humanity and the fullness of deity into one person. Miraculous. Unbelievable. But yet it is true. For unto you is born this day. You see, there was an exact moment in time when the Christ child was born. There was an exact moment in history when this child came into the world. And we see that in uh, what Paul stated to the, to the believers at Galatia, in Galatia uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 14, but when the fullness of time had come. In other words, God does everything at the right time, at the exact time. For when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. He who is eternal, who dwells, Eternally outside of time, entered into time personally with his creation. On January 22nd, 1958, at 12.05 a.m., I was born into the world, and I have a body, and I was infused with life. But 2,000 years prior to that, there is one who was born in the world that was eternal and is eternal. He came into the world, he came unto his own. And it was on a particular day that he came in accordance to God's will and timing for his son. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Not only was he born at a particular time, he was also born in a particular place in lockstep with prophecy. For it was the prophet um, Micah who said that one is coming. This comes from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 3. The prophet foretells the birthplace of the coming Messiah. In fact, this would be integral when the wise men would come. And they would look it up. Where is the Christ child supposed to be born? And it says here, prophesied 400 years before it actually occurred. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, 
who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, for God, one who is the ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old and from ancient of days. In other words, the one who is coming is eternal himself. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor shall give birth. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Not only was he born on a particular day, at a particular place, but he was also born for a particular reason, to be the Savior of the world. To save all who would come to realize their need for deliverance from the bondage of sin, with all its indwelling corruption, its darkness, and its death that it produces. For he will save all people who come to him by faith, who the Father draws to his wonderful light, and they believe upon him. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is how important those two words are. Who is? Now we are given the actual identity as to the one who is born. Let there be no doubt. Let there be no confusion as to whom the angel speaks. For the one who was born on a particular day in a particular city for a particular reason, a particular purpose, is Christ the Lord. There is no other. And it is amazing in the days in which we live where there's so much confusion as to what is the right thing to do, what is the wrong thing to do, what are, what, what are we supposed to do with, with the COVID and all that to keep ourselves safe. There is absolute assurance as to who this one is. He is Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord gives two out of many of these particular titles that this one shares or has. The first one is the title of Christ. Christ comes from the Greek translation of the Hebrew word for Messiah. He is God's own anointed. He is the deliverer, the redeemer, the prophet, a priest, and a king forever. He is the gracious and physical manifestation of God himself. Think about that. He is the physical manifestation of God himself to all mankind. For the scripture says, the one who was foreknown before the foundation of the world and manifested in these last days for our sake, which is given by the apostle Peter. He was given for our sake. Christ the Lord. The Lord speaks of his authority. It speaks the fact that he is the loving master. He is our all in all. He is, it, it is with him that we owe our allegiance. We owe our devotion and we owe our praise. For he is worthy. He is eternal. He is the Lord. He is the light that dispels the darkness. And he is God. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. These are the seven reasons why we can have hope this Christmas. In spite of all that is going on around us, in spite of all the confusion that I feel and you probably feel on a daily basis as far as what we are being told and what, what, are, we, what are we to believe, what should we do, how do we protect others, there's, there is this message that we can have absolute assurance in. The prophet Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace whom we now know to be Jesus, the Christ, our Heavenly Lord. For He is the Son of God. He is God Almighty in flesh, that we can know Him personally. He is our only Savior, and He is our blessed hope. We have every reason to have hope this Christmas. 
that will take us into this next year and into every year that follows and right into eternity. We praise the Lord for that. We thank you, Jesus, for coming. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. You are glorious. We thank you for that angelic announcement that gives us great hope in these dark days in which we live. We praise you, thanking you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And so it was that Silent Night was introduced to the world, accompanied only by a guitar. How fortunate we are that God blesses us with good things in the midst of adversity. He is our hope. So we'll end with Silent Night. Do you have a song book? Grab those, 122, and why don't we stand and we'll sing all three verses of Silent Night. 122.
that uh, we want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas to you and your families. Uh, Melinda, mostly Melinda, I help a little bit here and there, but uh, we have some homemade candles that are out there for you for uh, each of the families, so please uh, partake of that, and uh, may God bless us and our families all this Christmas, uh, this coming Christmas day, and uh, just have a blessed time. Let's close with the benediction. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. To you and yours, may you have a very, very Merry Christmas. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord.